Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. <clears throat> um, here's an interesting integral um, that I got the idea for off. This is a, uh, a very simplified version of a problem that I saw on Mathalysis World. I know I've been getting a lot of videos from him. His channel's really good. I'll link to his channel in the description. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the problem he does was from a... Um, a Romanian mathematical magazine. Now, the, the problem he does is much more complicated, and I plan on doing that next time. Uh, but this is just kind of a warm-up. Um, and I tried solving this with Feynman integration, and I was actually successful. I'm not going to show it, because Feynman integration is not the way to go on this problem. Um, it's possible. You can, you can accomplish it by uh, reparameterizing it with either a T or a T squared, wh whatever your preference. Um, and then, you know, doing the, just the standard thing. Basically, you differentiate with respect to T, evaluate the integral, reintegrate, and plug in known values. But that whole process is, it's really, really messy. You end up with a, uh, you know, one of those integrals from zero to infinity of one over X to the fourth plus one, and that's, that's no good. Um, there, it's doable, like I said, it's doable, but it's it's extremely messy. The way to go is um, is the the way I'm going to show you now. This doesn't involve Feynman integration, but we'll uh, we'll be deriving a cool identity that some of you might already know, and I think I've actually derived it on the channel before, but we're going to be doing it again. So anyway, let's just get into it. First thing we're going to do is let. Um, um, I'm sorry, yeah, let x equal 1 over u, which implies that dx is equal to negative 1 over u squared du. So, we'll now rewrite our integral using this substitution. So, um, I'm not going to do all, I'm not going to show all the steps, but I'm just going to show you what it turns out to be. Um, the steps are kind of trivial, but you'll get the integral from zero to infinity, and I'm going to go right back to x also. Um, that's going to be arc tangent of one over x squared over x squared plus one dx. And then I'll just go ahead and, and erase that substitution. So really all I did was just bring x to 1 over x, and this is what you get. All right, so now we're going to be deriving a, um, a trig identity. So I would like an identity for arctangent 1 over x squared. So first, let's say that question mark, that's my favorite mathematical variable right there, is equal to arctangent of 1 over x squared. Okay, so that means if we take tangent on both sides, um, we get that tangent question mark is equal to 1 over x squared. So from this, we will draw a triangle representing that relationship. So we have some angle question mark, and its tangent is 1 over x squared. And I'm not even going to write what the hypotenuse is. It's, it's the square root of x squared plus 1, but we don't even need it. Um, all right. So, great. So what does this mean? Um, well, this means that um, cotangent question mark is equal to x squared. See, the cotangent of this is going to be x squared. Now we're going to use the trig identity um, that uh, cotangent theta is equal to um, tangent of pi over 2 minus theta. So this means that tangent of pi over 2 minus question mark, that's our theta, is still equal to x squared. 
And you can kind of see that from here. If this is our angle question mark, then this angle right here is pi over 2 minus question mark. And the tangent of that would be x squared over 1. Okay, so now we'll take the inverse tangent on both sides. So that's going to give us pi over 2 minus question mark is equal to arc tangent of x squared. Well, our question mark is arc tangent of 1 over x squared. So that leads us to the identity that arc tangent 1 over x squared. And I sh you know what? I'm going to replace all these with a, with a theta. that's what I should have done to begin with. Although, I mean, it's still valid. What I just did is valid. And then we'll make this a theta. And also this. Because I wanted to show the identity in general, not just for 1 over x squared. All right, so did I get all of them? Yes, I did. So this means that the arctangent of 1 over theta is equal to, well, that's going to be pi over 2 minus arctangent theta. Pi over 2 minus arctangent theta. All right. So that's, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a neat trig identity right there. Um, so from that, uh, let's continue. With that, let's continue. And so, of course, this means that arctangent 1 over x squared is equal to pi over 2 minus arctangent of x squared. So, let's label this i. So now, we know that i is equal to this thing, right? It's equal to this thing. Well, this part up here is equal to pi over 2 minus arctangent theta. So we'll use that and split it up into two separate integrals. So we'll get pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, and then minus the integral from 0 to infinity of arctangent x squared over x squared plus 1. But that's simply i. So this is what we're left with. i is equal to pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, um, minus i. That's going to give us 2i is equal to pi squared over 4, or i is equal to pi squared over 8. All right, guys, that was a warm-up for my next video. Um, the next video is going to be showing something a lot cooler, uh, but this just kind of preps for that video. So I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.